Good morning, good morning, and God bless all of you. This is the Prophet Leonte, pastor of Lily of the Valley, Church of God in Christ, here in the city of Rochester, the state of New York. Uh, just coming on with our uh, Wednesday, or our word on Wednesday. I'm not going to be before you long. I uh, just want to encourage you all to continue to do the things of God. Let's be honest with God. Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, uh, in this time that we're living in, I believe it's a show of of uh, biblical um, uh, 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 the, the the biblical uh, word of God just coming forth and coming alive. We've read it for years and we've talked about it for years, and now it's here and it's alive. And not only that, um, this is a time that's going to show our character. Um, um, our, our faith in God, our belief in God, and the fact that um, God is all things and he can do all things. And what is the responsibility um, of the believer in a time of crisis? And I believe that it is for us to stay focused and stay true to God's word. And with that being said, I want to uh, teach, uh, start teaching today something that I have started and the Lily of the Valley folk uh, remember this. We had started teaching or giving a synopsis on uh, tithing and giving. Now, a lot of people say, why would you talk about that uh, during a time like this? Um, you should be talking about the well-being of the people. You should be talking about the safety of the people. You should be talking about the health of the people. Well, in this, um, all of those things apply. All of those things are covered when you read um Malachi chapter uh, uh, 3. It covers all of those things. And what happens when you do tithe and what happens when you don't? Uh, some people feel like this is a time that you ought to hold on to every nickel, every penny, because you don't know what's going to happen. But in the believer's life, we're not so concerned about what man can do to us because we know that we're in the hand of God. And if we're in God's hand, there's nothing man can do to us or the devil without getting permission. And with that being said, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the, the, the benefit. We're going to talk about the benefits of your giving and how it's attached to your overall success. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Give us clarity of thought. Give us the correct application. Give the people ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. And we um, uh, don't uh, want you to get deep. We want your understanding to be clear. So I want to go back now. The scriptorial text is Malachi 3 and 10. You all know it. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And so here he's he, he he's getting ready to share. He shares some truths, but uh, in this, he is telling you uh, the benefit package, you know. And even though it wasn't a long list, it was what he said that covers a long list of things. And so a lot of time people. Uh, don't understand, don't want to know the truth. And as a result, we live beneath our privilege. We, 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 we're not well in our body because of our thinking and, and our lack or inability to do what it is God would have us to do. Amen. And so uh, now, uh, uh, oh, excuse the phone. Uh, I'm in the house where I norm I'm normally not, so they're somewhere upstairs, so don't be troubled by that. Um, one of the things that's misunderstood uh, as the principles in the Bible is the principle of tithing. Much of the misunderstanding is in this most crucial area as a result of many things. Here's just a few. A few. The lack of study on the subject. A lot of times people don't get this because they haven't studied it. They don't want to study it because it seems that it's pulling them out of their comfort zone or they may be the type of person who don't want to give. Uh, and, and you have those type of people in church and then you have those type who don't give because they really don't understand it. And so there's, uh, but very few people go into this looking about the blessings of giving, they just want to receive. 
Uh, the second thing is the abuse in the church in the area tithing. So now you have to deal with uh, those uh, 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 persons. And yes, we've had some who, praise God, uh, 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 abuse the fact of tithing and, and use it as a game uh, to play games at, you know, it, uh, uh, to play games with people, to take advantage of them. Uh, and, and this can, uh, and because of this, you have a resistance as it relates to giving. Uh, then you have the fear uh, uh, of the clergy to teach exactly what the Bible is saying about tithing. Because the Bible talks about some hard truths. There are, are biblical blessings, you understand, for those who give and those who tithe. But there's some hard in some hard, in, um, some people might feel like even harsh realities to those who don't give and don't tithe. And, and, and I think that it is a, a misfortune and certainly a mistake and in, 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 in a bad mistake as it relates to uh, the, the, the pastor uh, who won't teach on this. I think that it is a... Uh, 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 it, it, it is bad or unhealthy for the followers or for the sheep that he or she leads when you don't teach on the, the principle of tithing, the principle of giving. And you have people that will teach on every subject uh, uh, but this because they feel cool spirits and people resist. Well, people only resist because they've been burned or they don't understand it and because they or they don't do it and when they don't do it they will not receive any benefits you have people who sit up in church that have a problem with giving because they've never been blessed by giving you know why because they don't give and then the last one um, uh, is the false doctrine from men and the devil as it relates to the subject of tithing. Because what the enemy wants to do is tell you that it don't take that. We had a guy, he was an elder, he had a lot of money and he would preach, he would give. But when he came, it came to tithe, he would always talk about, you know, no, I don't believe in this. The, 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 we, the, the, that's no longer a, applicable in the New Testament or to the church. Um, and then how he would try to uh, uh, prove his point is by saying you shouldn't give 10%. You should give over that. Well, 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 well with all his giving, it, was, it didn't really mean anything um, and from the spiritual side because he didn't do it according to God. He did it according to how he felt. And so he thought that he was doing something great by, by saying you should give over the tithe. But yet he didn't give that much. Now, he would give. He would, he would give. Now, understand, he would give if it came to projects, um, and the pastor got up and said, well, uh, we, we need a new um, uh, uh, air conditioning system, and I'm going to give uh, $5,000. He may get up and say, well, I'm going to give uh, 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 $1,000 to five people, you know what I'm saying, towards it four or five people towards it. You know, he would do things like that. But when you look at it, that was more showmanship than it was uh, 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 from a point of integrity and support. You know, you support it, but you support it so you could be seen and heard um, by the people. But because of the fact you have a problem with doing what the Bible said, you just like they said in the New Testament, sign the brass and tinkling symbol. And so we want to talk about uh, tithing. Now, what is the tithe? The word tithe comes from the Hebrew word ma'asar, which means a tenth part or payment of a tenth part. In other words, in Malachi 3 and 10, the tenth part of our increase or earnings are deposited in the storehouse of God. Your increase is what you receive from your labor which in today's economy is your gross, not your net income. The tithe in today's economy is given one-tenth of all the increase that comes into the life of a believer. Now watch this, which includes income from all employment prior to deductions, before deductions. See, that's why um, I teach that people should tithe off of their off of their income taxes and things of that nature because most of the time we are guilty sometimes and I'm not saying everybody but most of the time uh, uh, without even thinking 
we pay off what's on that stub and not off of necessarily what we made. You understand? And so it's not robbery to ask you, uh, in my estimation, according to the, the lesson, uh, that, that you tithe off that. And because most people do pay their tithes like that, um, what they get after the deductions, you understand? It, it is not out of order for you to come back when you receive your income tax and things of this nature, and you are able uh, 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 to tie, and you're asked to tie. And then the other thing is uh, income from investments, uh, other forms of increases like inheritance, monetary gifts, settlements, etc. Uh, a lot of people, uh, and I had even been in that position myself. Uh, uh, did, did it mean that I needed to give off of that and, all, uh, uh, and, and things of that nature? Now, whether you're going to go to hell if you do it or not, um, you know, uh, you, you should when, when when they talk about tithe, you know, offer your increase. Now, I think that it's noteworthy that you understand that uh, whatever you tithe, there is a benefit for you, for yours. The tithe is the tenth part of your income that, listen to this, and I've been telling you this, that you should return to God by bringing it to the storehouse where you are being spiritually fed. You are not supposed to send your tithe to no other ministry. If you want to send an offering, if the Lord talk, touches your heart, that's one thing. But you don't pay tithe. Um, you, and then when you do, you are operating illegally and outside of the will of God. Well, sometimes people get mad at something that they pass or something say, and, and, and they try to, you know, uh, uh, on the sly, um, hurt the church in some type of way because they're upset at that time, and you're. Not, I don't care who it is. It could your 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 father could be a preacher, but you're not supposed to tithe. Take your tithe. You can give him an offering, but you're not or her, but you're not supposed to take your tithe and give it to any other place than where you are being spiritually fed. And you cannot say, well, my, my, my father or my mother gave me a scripture that just revolutionized my life. I get what you're saying, but you can't tithe there. You can be a blessing to them if that's what's laid on your heart. But if you put your tithe there, you are out of order. You understand? you supposed to tithe where you are being spiritually fed. Anything, now get this. I want y'all to write this down. Anything less than 10% of your gross earnings is an offering. Huh? Anything less outside of the 10% that you tithe, anything less is an offering. All right? Uh, and then I tell you that the 10th part should be returned to God. Yes, I told you that. Now, now, anything more than 10% of your gross earnings is an offering. So you're required to give 10%, to return 10% out of your gross earning for your tithe. Anything less or anything more is considered uh, an offering. And you cannot pay on your tithes. You cannot pay, say, I'm going to pay this much today, and next week I'm going to pay that much. No, if your tithe is $1,000, you're supposed to give $1,000 and not necessarily try to break it up, you know, over time. Because if you get it, how are you going to catch up with that? How is that going to be right? If you if you uh, earn enough that you can pay ten a thousand dollars, that's hypothetical. And some people can um, uh, on a weekly or biweekly basis, and you're getting this income, and you're only paying a uh, hundred dollars or a uh, hundred and fifty dollars to stretch it out. You can't keep up with that, and so and, and so you can't pay on them. You have to pay them. Either you tithe or you don't. And based on 10% of your gross earnings or increase. Now, either you tithe and be blessed or you don't and be cursed. Either you tithe and be blessed or you don't and you're considered uh, a, a thief and a robber. Hallelujah. Tithing is a priority principle. Write that down. Tithing is a priority principle. The principle of the tithe is one of priority. Priority has to deal with order. When you put something in a proper priority, you're putting things in the right order. 
God is a God of order. Tithing is a tangible declaration that God is first in your life. You understand? When you tithe, and I know y'all said, that's about money. No, it's about priority. It's about principle. It's about doing um, what God says. It's about putting first things first. I remember my uncle in Chicago, he uh, 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 preached a message one time, have you done the first things first? First seek ye um, um, God and and. And, and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added. If I got that right, my mind is kind of floating on some other stuff I just dealt with before this year. First seek ye the kingdom of God. So have you done the first things first? When you uh, 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 get your life in order, then that means that you are a follower of God. You understand? And, 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 and it also shows that God is first in your life. It speaks to the fact that you acknowledge God as the true source of your increase and that he is the first priority. Well, we really understand that God uses this principle for here on earth, but it is God. You understand? Our jobs are a resource. People that help come and help to your aid, they, they are a resource. Uh, uh, the cars that get you from one place to another, it's a resource. The house that covers you and shelters you, it's a resource. You understand? But God is the source. God is the one who causes you to be able to afford those things, learn how to use those things properly. You understand? He is the, God is the true source of all increase. And when he say tithe and you do that, and he tell you to put that first, you're putting him first. He tells you before you get your check, before you pay a bill, that you should tithe. You understand? And that, and, 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 and that you do that first. And because <clears throat> your life, the tithing is interchangeable with God, it's a part of it, that means you're putting God first. Because you trust God to do it because you know he's the true source of your increase. He's not a resource, he's the source. You understand? When it comes to uh, 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 distributing what he's allowed to come into your life through the process of stewardship, Watch this. Tithing, write this down, is a pre-law and pre-post principle. This is good. There are some who believe since tithing started under the law of Moses, we should not tithe today because we are under grace. There are also some who believe tithing doesn't appear in the Bible as a New Testament doctrine, but nothing could be further from the truth. First, Genesis 14 uh, uh, Genesis chapter 14, uh, verses 13 through 20. Uh, Abram gives tithe to Melchizedek 422 years before the law. Genesis 28, 22, I mean 20 through 22. Jacob vows to tithe after a dream. 261 years before the law. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. And um, this is from a different translation here on earth. Mortal men that die receive tithes, but there in heaven he receives them from whom it is witnessed that he live. Romans uh, 2 and 22, sacrilege to be a temple robber, that it is sacrilege. That when you don't tithe, that's considered sacrilege. You understand? It, and it equals being a temple robber. But there, uh, 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 and the Bible talks about robbing the temple. It's talking about robbing the temple of tithes. Malachi 3 and 8, Paul, the apostle, is talking to the body of Christ in the New Testament church. This clearly shows that tithing is something that was a part of the New Testament church after the law of Moses. Romans 2.22, sacrilege. You understand? Let's look. Uh, and so, and so for the, for the persons who spend more time reading the Bible about praise God, um, why tithing don't apply uh, now, you understand? It, 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 they're probably uh, one of the ro robbers. Hallelujah! Oh, uh, 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 let me see if I can find this here. Hallelujah. 
in, in Hebrew, I mean, Rome, Hebrews 7 and 8. And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he received them, of whom it is witness that he lived. And as I may say so, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Tithing is, uh, uh, and you can go and read that in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter number 7, all right? And, uh, 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 uh. And so, and then in Romans uh, 2.22, let's uh, go there. So, I mean, when you look at um, people who tithe or don't want to tithe family, it really has to do with the message that I taught uh, the first time out after we had been quarantined from, the ch from being able to go to church. Amen? And, and, and talking about the integrity of people. Now, I'm not going to try to finish all this uh, today because I have to do our prayer. And I didn't do this uh, last night like I normally do, but I'm gonna be teaching on this uh, for, for a few weeks, I believe. Let's go over here to Romans 2.22. That thou mayest say, a man should not, uh, uh, that thou mayest, that thou, that that, Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that arborest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? And that's what he was saying, that, 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 that you are a dishonorable. He said, thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonoreth God. That when you don't do what the Bible say, you dishonor God. You're committing sacrilege. You understand? And they were called temple robbers, all right? Now watch this here. Uh, tithing is a stewardship principle. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Stewardship has to deal with something that's under your control. You understand that you over and how you handle it. And a lot of times, it, it, you know, people do it with the uh, half stewardship over over uh, 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 twos or, 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 or whatever you control it, but also with the finances that come, how you allocate your monies and how you do it. And, you know, my wife, I talk about it all the time, is a great steward. You understand? You think because you save money and that's good, <clears throat> because you pay your bills on time and that's good, that though that's, uh, falls under the banner of stewardship, but you can disallow all of that stuff by not returning the tithe and giving the offering. And we'll get in that as we begin to go uh, through these uh, 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 le lessons. A steward, um, a distributor, distributor, a manager, an overseer, a fiscal agent. Steward by Webster is one who manages another's property, finance, or affairs. Leviticus 27 and 30, and all the tithe in the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So all the tithe is considered something holy, something that's spiritual. It's more than just natural. We give it in the natural. It's used to do natural things with it, like keep the upkeep of the church and, and things that, uh, of that nature. You understand? But it is a spiritual move of God. You understand? It is, it, 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 it is not... It's not just a carnal. Anything that is holy belongs exclusively to God, and only he can say how it is to be used. Since the tithe is holy, it belongs to him. He has allowed it to come into your hands to manage and, dis and, and distribute it. God consider the tithe holy. And when you try to tempt God or don't pay, or don't do return to God what he considers holy, he considers you unholy. And so you could be doing all these other things in church. You understand? You could be giving offerings to, 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 to different uh, auxiliaries and people. You could be going around helping people and all those things are good. But if you don't tithe, bring the whole tithe, return it to God, 
which he considers holy, that is exclusively exclusively for him. And some people say, well, well, God, you understand, he don't need no money. But what he do is need obedience. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. You understand? Tithing is a protection principle. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Malachi 3, 10 through 11, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. When you tithe, you are protected. Your, your crops are protected. When we tithe, when we return the tithe to God, the, the, your, your house is protected, you are protected, your well-being, what brings you uh, substance and increase is protected. You understand? God has everything that, 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 that you need will be dealt with uh, and covered by God himself because you're walking in obedience. And so now let me tell you now, there are four things tithe and do. So I want you to write this down. I'll go a little slow, but you can always re remind this or what have you and go back and listen. Number one, it pre prevents negative spiritual forces from devouring the seed that God gives to the sores. You can find that in 2 uh, Corinthians 9 and 10. You understand? That, that 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 people don't believe it, that a lot of times you go through what you go through is because, amen, of your tithing or your lack thereof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, so it says uh, it prevents negative spiritual forces, amen, uh, from... Uh, from devouring the seed that gives, that God gives to the, uh, to the sower. Hallelujah. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the first fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which calls it through us thanksgiving to God. You understand? Because when, 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 when you give and when you tithe, your tithe keeps away the things that can cause uh, 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 certain behaviors, feelings, and even from a, uh, a physical sense, you understand, or a natural sense, God protects you. Number two, it's, it, it stops negative forces from causing you what you should receive as an increase from being destroyed. So, so, so when you don't tie opportunities that you might would once get, you don't get those now. You understand? Uh, because you don't return your tithe. You don't do what God said. You don't render to God uh, uh, what's holy put in his hands. But when you do, it stops uh, opportunities from being, uh, in many cases, from being, uh, 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 from, from you being passed by or overlooked, all right? So number one, it prevents negative spiritual forces from devouring the seed that God's give to the source. Number two, it stops negative forces from causing what you should receive as increase from being destroyed. Then, number three, it aligns you with proper seasons for increase. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time. Malachi 3 and 11. Your stuff won't be premature. Anything that's premature, that's not at, it's not at full strength. A premature baby is not at full strength. A premature marriage don't necessarily last. A premature cooking something that's premature is not good for you. You understand, but when when you when when you um, are a tither, you understand the scripture. The lesson is teaching that it, it it aligns, it aligns and positions you um, to experience uh, 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 the seasons that you should for increase. All right, and then number four. 
So number one, it prevents negative spiritual focuses from devouring the seed that God uh, gives to the sower. Number two, it stops negative forces from causing what you should receive as an increase from being destroyed. Number three, it aligns you with the proper season for increase. And number four, tithing is an insurance policy. It protects against loss. Because when you tithe, what that is saying is that you are now, uh, uh, not only are you keeping, but you are in covenant with God. You understand? So the fourth thing is tithing is an insurance policy. It protects against loss. Now, when you got real good insurance, amen, if your house is destroyed, uh, real good insurance is supposed to bring your house back uh, 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 pay for your house to be restored back to its original state. You understand? And then now, you know, uh, if your house is older, it's going to be it's going to be up to date. You know, uh, 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 new material, strong materials, better materials. But but it protects against loss. You understand that even though something is destroyed, even though something may be taken, is not taken or not destroyed because it's going to be replaced. And whenever God does something, he do it better. Hallelujah. Now, tithing is a possibilities principles. Malachi 3 and 10. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. When the Bible speaks of blessings, it is not referring to cars, homes, clothes, or for the most part, money. What the, what the scripture is telling you is the winners of heaven will release to you, watch this, ideas, strategies, and inventions that you could have never thought up on your own. These blessings are numerous and of great value. They are capable of producing great wealth. You understand? So when he talking about open up the windows of heaven, it's better than this other stuff that we think he's talking about, which are cars and homes. What it does, it gives you strategies, inventions that can become generational wealth. You understand? Release the ideas. I need a bunch of those. Don't you? You understand? Deuteronomy 8 and 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. When you remember God, what do you mean remember God? By acknowledging him that when your increase come in, you give your increase. When you acknowledge, that means you're remembering him. How you think about him. You're concerned with how he thinks about you. You're concerned with how um, you present God and how you carry yourself and how you act. See, that's what's wrong with this world. Why one reason uh, ab above many that we're in this pandemic because uh, many people in church and even in the world who know about God, we we don't regard God right. You understand? We don't keep Him in our covenant. But they say we got to remember that all increases come from God. I don't care about your job or how much money you've amassed because of some invention or idea. It came from God. You understand? And when you remember that, that it's him, that however you think you amass or how much you have amassed, even the sinner, it's God that caused thee and give it you the power to get wealth. Power, uh, co-op capacity means ability, might. You understand? It, 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 power is it, uh, means uh, chameleon, adapt to fit and prosper in any environment. You hear that? you like a chameleon that in any environment that the tither goes uh, to, he or she will learn to adapt. I didn't even know what that meant until, because I have hints of that in my life, uh, all through my life, even before I got saved, that even in the worst situations or whatever situation I'm in, I find a way if I'm there long enough mm -hmm. to deal with it. Not saying that I like it. Sometimes it turns out for the better. Sometimes it's not so good. But I learned to adapt with it so I could survive during that season of my life. And not only survive, but thrive in it. You understand? So it, it, means, it, it means capacity, uh, ability, might, and the, 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 the spirit of the chameleons to adapt, to fit, and to prosper 
in any environment. As a tithe pan believer, you can prosper in any environment you find yourself in. Many of us are doing it now. Many of us that tithe and do we supposed to in this, uh, uh, when they had that recession, you didn't miss a lick. You understand? You wasn't rich, but it was other people that had more than you. They were suffering, but you didn't miss a leg. You understand? You were still uh, going forth and thriving. You understand? And even in this pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen. We know this economy is cracking and all kinds of things are happening, but you're still feeding your families and paying your bills. You understand? Because the spirit of the chameleon is upon you because you are a tither. You're a believing tither, and so you can fit and adapt in any environment. Tithers can expect to have unlimited riches, ideas, inventions, and strategies that will bring them untold prosperity. Now, all of us may not be millionaires, but 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 if you're able to to thrive and go places, my wife um, was such a good steward. And, you know, I'd work and stuff, and she knew how to put the pennies and stuff together as she do now. And, w and, and my children, who are adults now, talk to us, and, 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 and um, they talk to us now. And out of nowhere, at different times, say that they had a, 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 a wonderful childhood, a good childhood. They were happy. My babies were all my children were, were, were happy babies. You understand? They smile all the time. They would be out and people talking about how beautiful their smile was and they were they were happy babies, not crying all the time. None of my children were. And 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 they and, and my two youngest talk about that, how how we took them places. And my wife was she would she 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 was family oriented, you know, and just like they are right now. I've been with her twenty seven years. And 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 our children, she had places and ideas, they've been all over the country. We've been to a lot of places. You understand? A lot of places. Uh, when they were children, they got a chance to experience what only a lot of more fortunate people were able to do. But because of the stewardship, listen, I used to pay $3 tithes. I'd get $30. I'd pay it. People was looking at me funny. Like, was I joking or something? But I paid that. And then after a while, they look and those times be $100, $1,000, $1,500. You understand? This thing works. So now in conclusion, and I'm going to let you go for this lesson. The principle of tithing is one of the greatest truths in the Bible. It preceded the law of Moses. It was included in the law of Moses. It is still a biblical principle for New Testament believers to utilize in order to be blessed today. Uh, people keep talking about the Old Testament. We're under grace and truth. But Jesus didn't come to do away with any of God's word, any of his word. Jesus is not just the, 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 the Lord of the New Testament. He is the Bible. He is the word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was what God's Word is God. Do you understand? He said, I'm the truth of life. God the Father instituted this. This is when you when, when, when you pray, you talk to God. When you read, God's talking to you. The heaven of earth will pass away uh, 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 before one jot or one till of his Word. When, when it's gone, the Word will still stand. And he didn't just say the Old Testament. He said his Word. So if you're going to try to do away with the new t the Old Testament, and say that was just for that day and time of dispensation. Well, there are some things that, that's in the New Testament was just for that day, that time, and that dispensation. Does it mean that it's not applicable now? No. He told us to eat all of this. You understand? Now, what you have under grace is a better understanding of the Old Testament, of the law. You understand? And Jesus came and gave us a more excellent way, a, more, a, a better way to live it, a better way to view it, a better way to understand it. And with the help and the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, a better way to live it and walk it out. You understand? So this is good, not just for the Old Testament, but this is good for the New Testament, in the New Testament, and it's good for the day in, in, in the 21st century. Huh? And so... Uh, 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 it is my desire for everyone in this uh, uh, lesson and for these of you, uh, Lily of the Valleys, and those that's going to um, be uh, viewing this, uh, to get your mind together and to settle the issue of, of tithing in your mind. 
and a, and of giving offers. All right. So if anything that's that's more than ten percent. That's less than 10% is an offering. Anything that's more than 10% is an offering. The tithe is 10%. Is one-tenth or one dime out of every dollar. God, you bring 10% of that to the church. You understand? God leaves you with 90%. Hallelujah. And so uh, once you get this in your mind, the blessing of, uh, of Abraham to release untold prosperity in your life from this time forward. So God is going to uh, bless us. And I've been saying, Lord, you know, because I'm doing the, uh, I do the, uh, uh, the, 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 the prophet's corner on Monday and, and on Thursday, and I started to get rid of some of it. And now we've started this prayer until um, this, uh, this uh, uh, pandemic is over. Not that we're going to stop praying, but maybe, at noon, because I'll probably be back to work or whatever, unless I can get somebody else that is not working during that time to take it on, or I do it sometime from the car. But we're doing a lot, and I'm saying, well, maybe I'm have to take a, a, a day now or something. Lord, maybe I'm doing too much unless you give me something. And today, when I was thinking about the lesson, you know, and uh, it came to me, well, get on here and begin to go through the lessons which you had started. You understand that you couldn't really fulfill uh, you had got away from it and begin to teach the body of Christ. Excuse that phone again. Uh, again, again, begin to teach the body of Christ the importance of the tithe. And, and, and that is not just about money. It's bigger than money. The tithe is holy and it's, it, 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 it's under the, the guidance you know, of God who is a holy God. It is totally holy because God is totally holy. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you now for your goodness and mercy. We appreciate you and we ask God in Jesus' name that you would move by your spirit and begin to let this settle and saturate down in the people of God and uh, get in their spirits and not just so much from a money aspect but uh, or a financial aspect, but a spiritual aspect of growth, maturity, uh, 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 being able to peer into the heart of God, you understand, and really and really learn of Him. He said, "Take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light." And so, God, we ask that You will give them ears to hear and give me the mouth of the learn during this season that we'll be teaching on this, that the people of God may be strong. Not in my name, but the name that's above every name in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. This will be up shortly. Much love. I love you to life, not to death. Much love, the prophet is out. Share this too. Uh, and try not to share it on Facebook. I'd rather, well, I can't tell you what to do. You go as the Lord leads you. But I'd rather for y'all to come over here and, 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 and uh, praise God on YouTube and help me build this up with your subscribership. And also, you understand, tonight is Wednesday for the Lily of the Valiants. Let's don't forget to give our uh, wow offering. And then if you want to be a blessing to yours truly, you can always use the cash app, uh, Pastor Tate. Much love, love you to life. Thank God the prophet is out.